Good morning, folks. I thought I would do a really quick kind of bloggy thing just to give you a quick update on what's going on today. It is Tuesday morning in January at some point, and it is ten past nine. Let me just turn this down two seconds. I've just come back from doing a school run. My daughter's dropped off at school, so I've got a couple of things to sort out. I'm going to take you off to a kitchen refresh job that I'm working on, which I'm doing a separate time-lapse video of, which you will see at some point. But I've just got a couple of bits I'm going to cut down in the workshop before heading off. It's just going to be much easier. I just need to quickly rip these down and put some edge tape on. I've got this kind of corner panel to sort out. That needs ripped on both edges. It's a bit of a retro fit that, but it's about the only way that it can be done other than using bits of plinth and stuff, but I think this will look a bit neater. I need to empty my rubbish bin. I need to top up my filler pot. I need to tidy up my bag of goodies that I take with us. Then I'm gonna head off. I've got a few of the bits and pieces that I need to kind of tidy away and stuff. And if you follow us on Instagram, oh my Lord. What has happened? Is it Heffel? Hef Hefele? Hef Hef Kof Hefe? For some unknown reason, they've started putting Phillips screws in. I don't know if you're aware, but in the UK, we predominantly use Posi Drive screws for almost everything. The Posi Drive is the type that's got the little cross on across the Phillips head, if that makes sense. They are infinitely better than Phillips screws. Phillips screws are the work of the devil. And Hefefefele hinges have always had posi drive screws and I've just bought a new batch and for some unknown reason, they've got Phillips screws. Honestly, I feel like my world has fallen apart. I'll never be buying these again unless I sort this problem out because that's a step back to the 1960s. Uh, stocked up on cork. I'm using this uh, Nemesis cork for a change. It's very lightweight and it dries really quick. It's harder to work and harder to tool than some other corks that I've used, but it's instantly paintable. Well, pretty much it, like, it gets a skin on it really, really quick. And it, as I say, it's really lightweight. So for big gaps and stuff where you need to paint it quickly, it's quite handy to have. You can feel when you pick the tube up, the tube feels empty, it's weird. But uh, it's quite handy to have that. I'm gonna be doing a video all about different corks soon. Out of matter of interest, pop in the comments what your favourite cork is because I'm going to be doing a bit of a comparison and if I can get hold of it in the UK, I'll try and include it in that comparison. But uh, So pop in the comments what cork you like to use. I'm just talking about, I'm not talking about silicon, I'm talking about like water soluble cork that you would use for, well, decorating basically, you know, around skirting boards and all that sort of thing. I need to get all these bits and pieces sorted and I need to get off to the customer because it's well well past quarter past nine now. Most of you have probably had half a day of work by now but I'll kind of drop my daughter off at school. It's the joys of self-employment and I wouldn't miss out on that for the world. Taking my daughter to school trumps everything. Dust collector doesn't sound normal. Uh, I need to crack on. Uh, mm, I guess I need to empty that. I was cutting this and it just sounded like not quite right. And it's like, uh, <laughs> it's always when you're kind of in a rush and you need to crack on. I'm just gonna have to survive without dust collection. I haven't got time to do that in a minute. Right, I'm at this job now. I've finally got the site. It's nearly quarter to 11 now, but I've spent the last kind of hour sorting out all these bits in the workshop because they all needed cut the size, edge tape put on. The edge tape's just roughly on at the minute and I'll do the final sand and file of the edges before fitting them. But I don't want to spend hours and hours doing that if for some reason it doesn't fit. So at the minute the edge tape is just roughly on and then I'll double check everything, especially with things like this corner piece. It's not designed 
for this corner. So it's a bit of a retro fit to get this into that corner. It may or may not fit. If it doesn't, I'm gonna have to build a custom little corner fillet. But I would rather use this because it's got the nice kind of, let me show you. It's got the nice rounded edge on it. It's got like the rounded corner. So I quite like that, but I've had to trim off that edge and that edge and then put edge tape on there and there. That's gonna be the bottom, so that's gonna get trimmed off, so I'm not bothered about that. But then at the top, ugh. and again, don't judge this yet because that's just temporarily, I'll cut that to size, but the top then also needed edge tape on, which obviously is in a weird shape. So what I've had to think here is where the join is because I can't get edge tape that's wide enough to cover that all in one piece. So I could either do like a mitre, but if I do a mitre on the edging, you're gonna be left with like a tiny, tiny sliver of edge right on this front edge that's gonna be prone to coming loose. So what I'd rather do is have the edge tape going across like that. This bit here will be hidden underneath the edge of this uh, worktop anyway, so you're never gonna see that. You'll probably never see this, to be honest, but you're more likely to see that than you are that. So I've done a piece kind of across and then another bit at the back, and I think that's gonna be the best way of doing that. And then I'll, I'll tidy all that up after I've checked that it actually fits, and I'll file down the edges and make it all look lovely. So this is just this kitchen refresh job that I'm working on at the minute. Great kind of job because the uh, owners are away on holiday and it's lovely being able to just kind of plough on and not worry about people coming in and out. I've got my podcasts on. Um, what am I listening to at the minute? Uh, Hello Internet, which is CGP Grey and Brady off everything. Brilliant podcast. So yeah, it's just a bit of a refresh. It's getting this like white slab. This has all still got protective coating on it. One of these custom panels is for here above the cooker on this kind of hood thing that comes out. Another one is for down here. But joy of joys, this is the old panel. I can't get that off without taking the entire oven out, which is an absolute pain in the backside, but such is life. It's basically, it's been attached in from the inside before the oven went in. There's no way to get it from underneath. I mean, I could literally rive it off, but I run the risk of then damaging the uh, carcass, which I have to keep. So I'm gonna have to take the oven out, which is a pain in the backside. So I've got that to do. I've got that top bit. I've got the corner fillet. And then I've just got the plinths to do all around the bottom. And then obviously handles. And then I've got loads of like filling because the new cornice and pelmets are a different shape to the old cornice and pelmets. So there's where the old cornice went up to. There's where the old pelmet went up to. So I've just put a bit of backfill in there, which I put in last night because it was quite a big gap. And then that's gonna get just a tile grout, which will match the tile grout that's already in. And then we've got kind of, it's been plastered around the cornice. You can see it more over on this side. There's a big kind of hole because it's been plastered after the kitchen's been put in. So it's obviously quite an old kitchen that was in should look all right once it's all done. It should be a nice kind of refresh. I don't normally do kitchen type work, but I don't mind helping out a regular customer with stuff like this. And the other pain in the backside with this job is that none of the hinge holes matched up to the holes in the carcass. So I had to drill new hinge holes in all of the carcasses because the old kitchen, the hinge holes on the doors were in a different place. As I say, this should be a time-lapse thing once I get all done and dusted. The time-lapse videos can take a little while to edit, so I'm not sure when that will come out. I'm gonna plow on now because it's probably nearly 11 o'clock now, and I need to get this done and dusted today. So should get finished by, I'm hoping four or five-ish tonight, and then I'll be editing and stuff like that in the evening until I fall asleep with my head on the computer keyboard. Hooty dooty, that's me about done for today. It's uh, taken way longer than I hoped, but I'm, I'm nearly done, but uh, I need to leg it because 
Mrs. Mack is going out. I was just going to quickly show you before I go how I decide where I'm putting handles on units because it's one of these things where if you get it wrong you can completely destroy the kitchen that you've just put in. So this is where I'll just show you how I've done it first of all. There's no right and wrong to this but the customer rarely expresses a preference so they're normally kind of relying on your expertise to decide where handles are going to go. With these particular handles obviously I've got the choice of whether to go kind of like that or like that or like that and that's a decision you're going to have to make. So at first with this kitchen what I was planning on doing is having the handles kind of like that mainly because I didn't like the idea of having, these are 500, so a 500, 500, 300, 300, and I didn't like the idea of having these two handles really close together and then those really far apart, and then those are 500s over there. Then when we come to the lower units, this is really what's dictated it. If I'd gone for vertical handles like that, then I would have to have a vertical handle here, on this unit and if I've got a vertical handle here on that unit then what do we do on this unit because you'd have to have one up here so you could end up with a handle like down there and another handle up there and it's going to look stupid so or you could go for a handle like you know like that but you're still going to have to have consideration for this drawer which is going to have to have the handle like that so rather than having a handle there and a handle there, it made sense to go for horizontal handles instead of vertical. It gives a nice clean line all the way around the kitchen at the same level and it's just it looks much much better I think. Basically this drawer has dictated the handle height for everything. So all I've done is measure halfway down and then little tip for you, I notch it up literally like a millimetre or two because if you end up with it slightly too low it's really noticeable. It, it, it's like a picture in a frame where the picture isn't sitting centrally in a picture frame. It can look like it's dropping out of a picture frame. It's the same on this sort of thing. If you end up with the handles too low it's really obvious. If they're too high it doesn't really matter if it's only a millimetre or so in it. But if you just end up with the handle, like a, literally like a millimetre down like that, it's really noticeable, especially once you're standing up, because it's going to look lower down anyway. So I just notch it up about a millimetre or two from central, and I think that looks better. So that then becomes my reference for everything. So I'm coming the same height down on that, same height down all the way around, same height up all the way along the top units, and then that just gives a nice kind of symmetry. We've got the same distance everywhere. Obviously the central, so that's uh, kind of a no-brainer on that side, but in terms of the height, that's what dictates the height of everything. And I think that gives quite a nice effect for the whole kind of kitchen, if that makes sense. I wasn't going to show you a finished picture of it. It's not quite done yet. I still have all the finishing touches to do. Just tidying up around edges. The place is in an absolute tip. I've just, I need to go. I haven't got time to tidy up. Luckily, the customer's not here. So I'm in the fortunate position that I can just kind of leave it. That's life. I need to go. Oh, and by the way, I didn't mention, I'm not going to put a handle on here. I just think... Having a handle up here that isn't in line with everything else, I think it'll look odd, personally. You know, if the customer asks us to put it up, I will, but I think it's going to look better just having a nice kind of run of handles along the bottom and then just leaving that as a flat bit. Cool, that's me for today. I hope you've enjoyed this little kind of another insight into a day in the life. It's taken two days to do this kitchen refresh. There'll be a full time lapse of the whole thing coming very soon. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you're new. See you next time. Bye.